Welcome to episode 23 of my 2022 Training Diaries. We're now less than a week away from the start of UTMB, both my and Audrey's goal race for the year. And after spending about a week and a half in Annecy, we left on Wednesday for La Plang, which is a ski resort just south of Mont Blanc. We rented an apartment here at an altitude of close to 2,100 meters, and we've got an incredible view of the Mont Blanc Massif right from our balcony. UTMB isn't exactly considered a high altitude race, but we will be climbing above 2,500 meters, so living and training here at altitude for the week before the race definitely won't hurt. We've mostly just been laying low and resting as much as possible this past week, while doing just a few final workouts and runs, which I'll tell you about in this video. I also managed to squeeze in a visit to the Solomon Design Center last week before leaving Annecy, where I got a bit of insight into the development of the new Solomon S-Lab Genesis, a shoe that I was actually lucky enough to get my hands on a few months ago as a beta tester. So I'll show you a bit of footage from that and I'll tell you a bit more about these new shoes. Monday I took as a rest day as usual, so we took the opportunity to spend one last day wandering around town in Annecy. On Tuesday, I then had a hill workout scheduled, so I headed to the same nearby trails that we ran the week before, just west of town, since I knew that there was the perfect hill there for my hill repeats. It took about 20 minutes to reach the base of the hill, which was a perfect warm-up for me as well. The workout involved doing five minutes of uphill running at a tempo effort, so around RPE 7 or 8. I then turned around and ran back to where I started as hard as I safely could. So it was essentially a concentric and eccentric workout in one. I took a two minute walk break to recover before doing this four more times, so five sets in total. And I followed this up with a 20 minute cool down run back home. I was using the new Solomon S-Lab Genesis, which are actually designed as a long distance shoe rated for over 800 kilometers. And they're surprisingly light at around 260 grams thanks to the lightweight materials being used, which is common in the S-Lab lineup. But I find them to be so stable underfoot that I think they also make for a great shoe on hard, rocky descents, where the shoes I'd normally wear, like the Solomon S-Lab Pulsars, don't provide quite as much protection. Wednesday, I was then lucky enough, as I said, to squeeze in a visit to the Solomon Design Center before leaving Annecy where I met with Merion, the S-Lab trail running product line manager, to learn more about the process involved in designing the S-Lab Genesis. Yeah, yeah, it's a version one. What yeah. we do sometimes to test some construction or to do mm. be reactive, we ask to the, um, to the factory in China to use, for example, um, midsole that we already have, but okay. we ask to put, uh, for example, matrix. And mm. for this uh, sample, we want also, you see, to test uh, another uh, quickless uh, system. Mm -hmm. When we receive, we say, ah, okay, that is working, that it's not working. Uh, for example, you see, we try something like this, but it's not uh, like the final one. Mm, yeah. The pocket lace also, it was a little bit too small compared to that we have now that is going to be bigger. And then when we receive this sample, we say, okay, uh, it looks pretty good. So we are going to send it to the field to test it in reality, in real condition. And for example, after we have some feedback, so that is one shoe that we get back from some tester and we see that you see it's not possible to have this on the shoe. It was, uh, I think, uh, 500 kilometers. So we decided to ask to, uh, the factory to do some changes to have more um, durability and quality here on this piece. So you said it's about a two year process? Yeah, two years of process of, uh, for developing the shoe because we need to test the shoe in a uh, real condition. And for this one, it was even more than that. It was 800 kilometers. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people come back, we have a big issue. So we ask to the factory to change, to do a new sample. They mm -hmm. resend and we have to read on the 800 kilometers. So it's why it takes time. And sometimes we plan to launch the shoe, for example, beginning of 2022, and we have to postpone it because we need to validate some quality or durability issue. We are not going to launch the shoe if we are not sure that it's durable or if it's not um, fulfill all the requirements that we have. So as you can see, these shoes go through quite a few iterations and a ton of testing over two years or more before coming to market. I got to see a whole bunch of really cool stuff on my tour there at the Design Center that I unfortunately couldn't film this time because so much of it is confidential. But I am hoping in the future to be able to provide you with a much more in-depth look at this entire process. It's just gonna take a bit more planning. 
But the shoes I'm most excited about these days, as you probably know, are the S-Lab Pulsar and the S-Lab Pulsar Soft Grounds, which I used on the Tour de Mont Blanc and which I'll be using for UTMB. Yeah, so that one is the first prototype of the Pulsar, made for Kilian for Sierzinal. So it's right in there. And the funny thing is that uh, this yard was only available in white. So that's why we gave this shoe to Kilian like three days before the race. And he was completely crazy about this shoe. So uh, we keep it and then we move it today uh, with the new one, the soft ground, with soft ground lugs for uh, more muddy terrain or uh, soft ground uh, terrain. Wednesday afternoon, our friend Charles picked us up and we drove about two hours to La Plagne here. And after getting settled in, we went out for a 45 minute easy run to check out the lakes and to explore the resort. We just arrived in La Plagne here. We're with our friend Charles now from Vancouver, who's originally from France. You can definitely feel the altitude already. <laughs> but it's a beautiful area. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. Never came, only came in the summer, oh, in the winter. Yeah. First time in the summer, so. It's nice to just go to one side without snow. Yeah, it's always nice to explore a place kind of in two different seasons. <laughs> Camera. Is this so nice? Yeah. <laughs> Ridge running. Thursday, I actually had another rest day scheduled, so I visited the pool and sauna rooms here in the hotel, but no running at all. Friday, I then had a 45 minute easy run on the schedule. So Charles and I just did a little loop around the ski hill. Oh, the rain is coming. Saturday was my last scheduled long run before next week's race. So it's Saturday morning, we're just heading out for a long run. Uh, I've got about two and a half hours in the schedule, so we'll do a big loop around the ski hill, aim for about two and a half, give or take. <laughs> yeah, this would be a great place to ski. We're just talking about how much terrain there is on both sides of the mountain here. So we're up at uh, 2,600 meters, uh, a little bit higher than the highest point we're gonna get to in UTMB. I think we get to 2,565. So not a high altitude race, but uh, when you're fatigued, you can definitely feel those climbs above 2,000 meters. And uh, we're just trying to decide which way to go because it looks like there's some really cool trails back here too. Uh, we could even follow the ridge all the way up to that next summit or drop down into the valley. Mont Jovet, which is that high there, but just before it, we can stop at Tête du Jardin. Bonjour, merci. Bonjour. Bonjour. La Plagne turned out to be a ridge running dream, and there's no end to the variations and loops that you could run around the ski hills and nearby peaks. Ridges for days. Look at that. Back up. 
we go. No matter how high you climb in the Alps, you're always greeted by cows. I love a good ridge. Sunday, I had an easy 90 minutes of cross training on the schedule. So I used the stationary bike in the gym downstairs in the hotel. So for the week, I ran just over 42 kilometers or 26 miles with about 2,500 meters of elevation gain, roughly 8,200 feet plus equal descent. So that's it. That's my last update before UTMB. The race starts this coming Friday, the 26th in the evening here in France. So morning in North America. And UTMB has really great tracking where you can even see short clips of runners coming through the different aid stations just by searching for their bib numbers. So if you wanna follow along, I'm bib number 622 and Audrey is bib 650. We've got some rough time goals in mind, but I'm not going to announce any of those publicly because I don't wanna put any undue pressure on either of us. The primary goal for both of us this first time racing UTMB is really just to finish and to enjoy the experience. But in my next update, you'll get to hear all about our final preparations in Chamonix, including our gear and nutrition for the race, along with some highlights from the race itself. And if you're gonna be in Chamonix for the race, then don't forget to come say hello at the NAC booth on Thursday between two to 4 p.m. So wish us luck, give this video a like, and I will talk to you all in just over a week from back home in Canada.